Hello and welcome to our next week of MPC 95. We're going to start off by looking at section 2.4. It's all about formulas, how we can work with formulas in algebra, and use what we talked about last week to manipulate formulas. This is going to start off looking a lot like what we did last week, just with a lot more letters in it. You're going to see problems like A equals BH, and we want to solve that for H. What that means is I want to get the H all by itself. So we start with the formula A equals BH. And I look what's with the H and how is it connected to the H. And we're going to attempt to solve so the H is by itself. A common error I see at this point is people try and get rid of the H. If we're solving for H, don't touch the H. You want to get rid of everything else. So let's start taking a look at this. We've got B times H. To get rid of B times H, we need to divide. And we can divide by B just like we could divide by a number. The B's are going to cancel, and now we have A divided by B equals H. The H is by itself. We are done. We have solved for H. Here's a slightly more involved problem, and we're going to solve for B sub 1, or B1. There's a B1 and a B2. We want the B1. We're going to start with the formula. And we found out last week that if there was a fraction, I can get rid of that fraction by multiplying by the least common denominator. So we're going to multiply by 2, and the 2 is going to cancel on the right side. And now I have 2A equals H times B plus 1 plus B plus B2. Next thing I notice is the last thing in order of operations would be the H outside of the parentheses. That's times H. Instead of distributing, we're just going to get rid of it right now by dividing by H. When I divide by H, the H's are going to cancel. And you notice every step, the other side becomes a little more involved. Make sure you're writing the whole thing every time as it becomes more involved. You're actually getting closer to the answer. Now we have B1 plus B2. We want B1, so we want to get rid of the B2. To get rid of plus B2, we subtract B2. Now looking at the left, it might look really complex, but what I'm looking for is are there any like terms on the left I can combine? No. So we're just going to write it as a long expression. Two, 2 times a over h minus b2 is equal to b1. b1 is by itself. I now have solved for b1. That is my answer. How about this problem? Solving for x. Start. Whoa, that's a different problem. There's a misprint on here. That should be 4x minus 2y solve for x. So in your notes, please note there should be a y right here. 4x minus 2y equals 7x plus 3. Well, first thing we always did when we were solving equations before is that variable we were solving for, we wanted all in one place. We're going to do the same thing again. We're going to combine all the x's. We've got x's on both sides. We need to subtract them off one side. Subtract the smaller one, I always say. So subtract 4x from both sides, combine like terms, and now the equation looks like this. The x's are all together. We want everything else on the other side now. Working order of operations backwards, we have to get rid of that plus 3 first by subtracting 3. Any like terms on the left side? Nope. If they're not like terms, we just write them out. Negative 2y minus 3. And now to get rid of that 3 times x, we just divide by 3. And that leaves us with this funky looking fraction for our final answer. x is equal to 2y minus 3 divided by 3. Here's an interesting problem. 5x minus 6y equals 18. We want to solve for y, and it wants us to put it in the form y equals mx plus b. So the final answer will be y equals something 
times x plus something. Well, we'll start the same way. Working order of operations backwards, we're not going to divide by 6. We need to get rid of those 5x's. Basically getting rid of everything that's not a y. Subtract 5x, no like terms. Now we've got negative 6y equals minus 5x plus 18. Now why did I put the 1 with x first? Well, if you look at the form the answer wants to be in, it wants to be something times x first. So I put the something times x first in my answer, and then the plus extra number at the end, just like the plus extra number at the end here. Now we need to get rid of that negative 6. Negative 6 times y, the opposite, divide by negative 6. And we're going to divide both parts by negative 6. This is kind of like distributing. In fact, it's exactly like distributing. We need to divide everything by negative 6. And when I do that and reduce, we end up with y equals 5 6 x minus 3. Go ahead and leave that as a fraction. If 4x minus 5y equals 18, we're going to find y when x equals 2. Well, now what I can do is I can plug 2 in for that x, because I know the x is 2. We don't know what y is yet, but I know for sure that x is 2. Do a little simplifying. 4 times 2 is 8. And hey, this looks like a problem we would have solved last week. Order of operations backwards. Need to get rid of that 8. Negative 5y equals 10. Divide by negative 5. y equals negative 2. One more example I want to look at. You're going to see a couple applications problems today. There are a lot of equations that are in the book that will be very useful for you to solve these problems. This one's talking about principal and interest. So there's going to be an equation involving principal and interest that you know you're going to need to start off with. I equals PRT. Let's see what this problem says now. The principal is $150 and the time is four years. The account has earned $35 in interest. We are going to find the interest rate. Since I want to find the interest rate, I know that rate is r in the equation. So we're going to solve for r. To get the r by itself, we need to get rid of the p and the t, which are connected by multiplication. So we're going to divide. Divide by pt. That'll cancel the p and the t on the right. And now I end up with i over pt equals r. Now we're ready to plug in all the information we got from the problem. The interest is 35. The principal is 150. The time is 4. So now we plug those in, simplify, multiplying on the bottom first. Parts of a fraction always come first. And then when I divide, the r is equal to about 0.058. Well, interest rates are usually expressed as a percentage. So to get a percentage, we move that decimal spot two places, and we get 5.8% interest. Again, as always, please check the book, especially this section. There are a lot of formulas and a couple more examples that can help you out a lot. And the assignments on page 116, numbers 7 through 99. We're going to do every other odd again. And all the homework this week is going to be due on Tuesday, October 7th by 3 p.m.